I'm your host Jason Park and behind me I have a 2014 Hyundai Genesis 2.0 Turbo R-Spec DK2 Coupe. This little gem here is my car. So stick around because it's tuner time. Today we're going to talk about why I drive a 2014 Hyundai Genesis. Why the Hyundai Genesis Coupe? Well, so before I got this car, I've owned the Honda S2000, Mazda RX-8, basically every car under 20K used, right? I've pretty much owned. I've owned about 30 cars at, at this point. Um, I actually put a down payment on the 2022 Subaru BRZ. And the reason why I put a down payment on it is because when we were filming Four Amigos, the hero car, is a brz and it was supercharged so i really liked the way that felt it felt planted the power was adequate and it was all usable so i was instantly a subaru fan right instantly then i sat on it for a while after putting down the down payment and i was like you know i just didn't want to go thirty thousand dollars in debt and we all know when you start spending money on cars and car parts you become car poor and what that means is, you know, all your money goes towards car gear, whether it's suspension, brakes, wheels, interior, you know, uh, Apple CarPlay, it doesn't matter. We all in the car culture at one point or another are car poor. So I didn't want to go, uh, you know, 30K into debt. So something kept telling me, Hyundai Genesis, Hyundai Genesis, Hyundai Genesis. And like all of us, I started going and watching every single YouTube video. I Googled about it and just became obsessed, right, with the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. So then I started doing research and realized that there was a huge difference in price and performance and in quality between the BK1 and the BK2. The BK1 is basically up to 2012 and then 2013 and above was the BK2. So I went ahead and was like, okay, got it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the BK2. It's 274 horsepower uh, for the 2.0 turbo R-Spec, I opted out for the 3.8 just because I like the sound of turbo. Uh, I'm, I'm not someone that chases power. So for me, this sound of the turbo just never gets old, especially when you hear it spewing or spooling and all that stuff. So I opted for the 2.0 turbo. Then before actually purchasing the car, I test drove a few others. I test drove the 3.8 and all that stuff. And, and the power was good, right? It was a lot, but it, the, the, the 2.0 turbo just has thrills, right? It has like, like a circus feeling to it, especially when the turbo kicks in. And with a $600 to $700 tune, you can have just as much power as the stock 3.8 with less weight on the 2.0 uh, liter motor. So I opted for the BK2. The BK2 is by far the more improved uh, version compared to the BK1. So if you're looking for a Hyundai Genesis, I would highly suggest the BK2. So why the color black? Uh, all of my cars have been black. The S2000 was black, my Preludes have been black, my CRXs have been black, my 3 Series Beamers have been black. For some reason, I'm always attracted to black cars. Uh, but one of the main reasons why I got it in black was the price that I got it at, the mileage that was on it, and the cars that were available at the time that I was looking for a car. Prior to this, I had a Lexus CT200H as my daily. And after a while, I mean, the gas mileage is phenomenal in that car, but after a while, you kind of want something a little different. 
Um, especially if you're into tuner cars, you like to, you know, mess with your car. You like to kind of have fun when you're getting off on the exit ramp. You like to, you know, take your fun, your, your, your children in style, I would say, if, you know, you're someone that has kids and you have a STI or, you know, an Evo or a car with back seats. That's one of the main reasons why I got it is because it has back seats and they're like full adult back seats for my son to sit in. So when I was looking for cars, there was a white one, there was a gray one, but the black one was in the best condition. It was the best price for the mileage. And it, it, to me, it was a no brainer because the way the car sits, it, it suits me, right? Bronze wheels, Brembo brakes, uh, limited slip diff. The car out the box is pretty much things that I would have done to it. So I bought it that way because when you're a family man and you have kids, Sometimes there's moments when you want to work on your car and there's moments where you just want it to work out of the box. The things that I really enjoy about the Hyundai Genesis Coupe is that the way it feels when you're driving, right? It's not as planted as like, let's say the S2000 or the Corvette. It's, it, it's not like that. It's not a sports car. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong with the Genesis Coupes. You know, when they built it, they built it out after the G35s and the G37s and stuff. But it's more of a GT Grand Tour car. It's more of a car that you can take on a cross country trip, you can take to the mountains, you can have a good time, but still have your back in place after you've been driving it for a while. Um, now, my particular setup, you know, is not necessarily the case. I don't have fat tires, you know, they're pretty much rubber bands at this point, but it's a GT car. So the car for me is very comfortable. It has power when you need it. The, the, what you're getting per dollar is absolutely fantastic. This car is so undervalued that I don't understand why it doesn't have a larger following. I mean, literally out of the box and for the price, you get a premium interior. Granted, it does have plastic, hard plastic on the interior, but for what you're getting, if you compare it to even like the 2022 BRZ, you're getting a lot more, right? You, you, you have your, your simple infotainment sister, you got your heater, you got your radio, I put a tablet in there. Uh, your gauge cluster is very simple. You have your, your RPM and your gas, and you have the speed that you're going at. Uh, you feel planted when you're driving. You know, it's rear wheel drive, limited slip diff, Brembo brakes, racing suspension, all from factory, 274 horsepower, 274 foot pound torque. I could be off on the number a little bit, but it's more than enough for your everyday needs and to have fun when you need to. Um, I wouldn't say the car is very raw. It feels a little more refined, but you don't ever feel like you're gonna lose yourself when you drive it, but you don't feel like you're driving a sedan or something that's super soft as well. The car is just a good balance of everything. It doesn't really do anything superbly well, but it does everything good. And for me, as a dad, good is good enough. Uh, I don't have any mods to my car. All I do is take care of reliability issues, um, oil changes, things of that nature. The reason why I tend to not do mods, unless they are something that's gonna make the driving better like suspension, brakes, uh, tires. Outside of those things, I typically don't do aftermarket parts. And the reason for that is resale value and reliability. Those are two things that I tend to go through cars fairly quickly. So every year I kind of have this thing where I'm like, ah, I kind of want something different. It doesn't have to be more expensive, just something different, right? Something different to have fun in. So I tend to not do uh, any crazy mods to the car. I won't do a body kit or anything like that. Um, I won't upgrade the turbo. For me, it has adequate enough power. The only thing I'd probably do is the um, is a tune on it, you know, just to get that extra 30 to 50 horsepower. That's probably the only thing I'd do at this point. So one of the greatest uh, memories for me in this car, it, it actually comes, it's undriver related. It actually comes from my son. So prior to this, I was driving the Lexus CT200H. Uh, I sold my S2000, bought the Lexus, and then, you know, uh, bought the Genesis. For some reason, every year I kind of go through this cycle where I'm like, ah, I'm kind of over cars. I'm going to get something reliable and dad like. And then three months later, I'm like, nah, I need something, right? I kind of go through this vicious cycle. So 
the greatest memory that I've had in it was uh, one morning I got my son ready to take him to school and my wife wasn't there so we couldn't take her car. So I was like, okay son, let's go. And he got in the car and he was like, oh, daddy upgrade. <laughs> that, to me, that was the greatest moment. I was like, yeah, daddy upgraded. Even though the Lexus was more expensive um, than this car, even currently in the used market, it, it's still more expensive. Not by a lot, but like a couple thousand dollars. Uh, my son felt like it was an upgrade. So for me, it felt like it was an upgrade. It feels like daddy's Batmobile. Uh, and, and for me, that's the, that's the greatest memory I have in this car. So for me, this car gives me the feeling of responsible fun, right? It's not, it's not that there's so much power that I'm gonna get in trouble. All of the power is usable. I don't ever feel like I'm gonna lose control. It's still rear wheel drive, so I can still kind of go around corners faster than I, I could in a front wheel drive car. Um, so the, the, the feeling for me, I, the best way to describe it would be responsible fun. I know that I'm not breaking the bank. I know that if I need to fix something, it's affordable. And it still just gives me that feeling of like a Grand Tour sports car. Like I can still rip the corners. I can still, when I need to get off on an exit ramp, I can still floor it and get there in no time. So the car for me is, is, is an all around great package. If I could put it on like a one through 10, 10 being like an absolute best made car ever made, I would just give this car like a 6.57 just all around. It's just all around a 6.57. Good gas mileage, handling, comfort, everything is just good. So it, yeah, it's, it's a great little gem. It's a great little gem. I suggest anybody, whether you're a dad, whether you're, it's your first car and you're 16, you just got your license, because it's affordable, right? You can afford it at that point. Whether you know, you're know you in your mid-20s, you're going from one car to another car, I suggest everybody take a look at the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. Whether it's the 3.8 or the 2.0 Turbo, you won't be disappointed. Now, I will say this. The con to this car, and I wouldn't even necessarily call it a con, but it does rev hang. So like if you're in first gear and you're like, what? When you shift, it's not gonna just drop. It, it, it sits up there for a little bit before it drops. Now you can look at it as a pro or a con. You can look at it as like a, a factory made rev matching, but on accident, or you can look at it as like, I'm just so annoyed with it. Apparently tunes help with this and it helps rectify and fix this. I don't know because I don't have a tune yet, but honestly on my daily driving, it just, it doesn't affect me at all. So I just, I don't even really think about it. Here's some POV action of the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. This feels very like it feels very tight and it also feels like I'm like almost like in a spaceship. Uh, the interior feels great. Uh, it feels, this feels like how a car should feel every time you drive one. You know what I mean? Especially a manual. Ooh, that's nice. Alright guys, so right now I'm in the 2014 Hyundai Genesis 2.0 Turbo BK2 R-Spec Coupe. This is my car, I own it, so I have a vast knowledge uh, on ownership of this particular vehicle. There's a lot of leg room, there's a lot of room back there for kids between the age of, let's say, you know, 5 to 10. I wouldn't say there's a lot of room for adults back there, but there's definitely a lot of room for kids, so if you're a dad, it's a great little family car. The gearbox, I would say, is very notchy, it's very clunky. 
it's not buttery smooth like some other transmissions from some other automakers but it does the job and it does the job just fine the only difference is when you have a car like the hyundai genesis you have to shift the way it wants to shift not the way that you want to shift so it's going to go into gear in the exact way that you want to shift it you can't just you know go from first to second and it's just going to find it you have to be precise kind of with it uh the hyundai genesis is kind of like the middle ground between a sports car and a luxury car as far as interior if you kind of look around you look at your gauge cluster i mean it has all the information and everything you need here you have your fuel consumption gauges your turbo your oil temp and all that good stuff but everything feels premium right not luxury but it feels like a premium sports car with what you're getting this is hard plastic it's not soft you know the seats are are leather or pleather but they're nice and comfy they hug you around the waist um yeah everything about the interior on this car is like i would say uh, high-end sports but not luxury but it does the job just fine you don't feel like you're getting cheated especially when you're talking about you can get these anywhere from 10k to you know 25,000 what you, what the, the amount of car that you're getting is well worth the price that you're spending uh, the handling very smooth it's not tight and nimble like a smaller car because this is a larger Grand Tour GT vehicle it's not like a tiny nimble MR2 or your you know typical Honda Civic SI um, it's more akin to the G35s the G37s of that nature so yeah let's go ahead and give it a little little gas there's no cars behind me so I'll let you guys hear that turbo spool nicely already at 60 miles an hour it gets at the speed just fine the power is super punchy it's not linear like a uh, bigger displacement motor right it doesn't have that linear power like a v6 or a v8 but what it does have is punch from about 4,000 rpm to 6,000 rpm the red line here is about 6,300 so you know it definitely gets the job done especially when you're talking about 270 horsepower 270 foot pound torque it has the limited slip diff in the back you have your Brembo brakes for braking you know the car is very agile for a two-door coupe that's on the bigger side um, it definitely does not drive like a sedan you know when you think of something like the Lexus IS 300 the Lexus IS 300 is very floaty right it feels floaty this this feels planted you know it's it's definitely a car for anyone that wants a sports car but still needs back seats for their family or they want to haul things the trunk space over there can definitely hold two golf bags no problem you can go grocery shopping and you know fill that bad boy up it's going to give it one more time in first gear gets up and goes very nicely and you have the sound of the turbo that really makes it a theatrical you know almost artistic piece to owning the 2.0 turbo R spec or really any turbo car for that matter you kind of have this this theatrical noise that comes out right so it's it's definitely a car that I would say in 2021 even though we're going into 2022 and by the time you see this it will be 2022 I think it's the best bang for your buck car on the market I think that when you talk about what you get out of the box it's up there when you compare it to other cars in its class 
used G35s, G37s, um, 370Zs. I would even say WRXs because right now used STIs and EVOs are way out of budget for what they are used. You compare cars in this class, it does everything you need to do and a little bit more while still keeping that fun factor, while still being affordable, while still getting decent MPG. Uh, and quite frankly, the car looks great. Even though designs are a personal preference or a personal opinion, me personally, I like the way the Hyundai Genesis sits, the way it stands. If you look at it from its side profile, um, it has really nice body lines. So if you're on the market and you're thinking about getting a used car and you want something under 20 grand, but you want something a little more than, you know, a used Civic from the 90s or you know, a 240 with 200,000 plus miles on it and there's a knock in the motor and you're still gonna spend six, seven grand for it. I would definitely say give the Hyundai Genesis um, either the 2.0 turbo or the 3.8 R-Spec or if you want an automatic with a sunroof ultimate, give it a look. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Fast way, I say, oh, I'm gonna go fuck all my mood. Leo, get the door. Got it. Sometimes you have to become the monster to save the one you love. Your mother's labs came back in? The cancer is spreading fast. She does need surgery. Um, without that payment, tomorrow she's going to be discharged. In two days, we're gonna rob Chino. No, Chino! God! Come on, man, I have a family! Don't do this shit, man! I mean, there's gotta be another way. There is no other way, Leo! If we don't rob Chino right now, my mom is as good as dead! I'm gonna go 